Hi guys, I'm Sam from the Unity of Life and welcome back to my channel. So, let's just recap. We did a little mini-series on humans and animals and their lives together and how they intertwine and everything that we do bad to them and all the glorious things that they do for us. So, we mentioned a little bit about law in one of the last, last videos, so that's what we're going to do in this little mini series stand with this one. And today we're talking about the Animal Welfare Act of 2006, which really needs to be updated because there's so many loopholes. But let's get into that. Okay, so the Animal Welfare Legislation laws is in the UK, all the laws that I'm talking about are in the UK. Um, so they've evolved over the time for the well-being of the animals. So there however, are slightly different laws just to confuse you in Scotland and Northern Ireland. And sometimes, depending on the law, it just does change from wheels as well. So many acts are based on what is known as the five needs, <laughs> which in reality are more than, uh, are more of common sense. Um, than any law can provide protection for. Because uh, it is common sense. So I'm going to go through what those five needs are, and you'll know what I mean when I say that it's just common sense. So, the need for a suitable diet, the need for a suitable environment, the need to exhibit normal behaviour patterns, the need to be housed with or apart from other animals, because some animals cannot stand other animals. And the need to be protected from pain, suffering, injury and disease. So those are the five animal needs on which this whole law is based upon. Okay, so the way the laws in the UK are laid out is that they, it can be hard for people to understand. Even I struggle and I have a university degree so and in science actually. So... However, they cover the requirements, the offences in the legal defence and the penalties which may be imposed. Okay, So various law laws have schedules. Uh, these contain additional information. Uh, lists of what are dangerous wild animals. Because they're covered in a different act. And many of the laws or acts have logical reasons for their existence. Unfortunately, a law is never brought out to prevent something until something bad has happened. Which maybe should be changed. Prepare for the unexpected. Most acts, exemptions or exceptions, that's what they have, um, which brings us into loopholes. Um... And the car, it can also always not be quite clear when you're breaking a specific law or not. Like, for example, all your dogs now in the UK legally must be microchipped. If you are sitting watching this and your dog is not microchipped, I'm sorry, but you are breaking the law. And I do know people who have not got their dogs microchipped. However, they'll be watching these videos. I seriously doubt it. Anyway... Uh, many of the acts lay down a requirement for suitable insurance, um, protection, uh, and there's yeah, new laws are and amended as new situations occur. And uh, then we do have local laws as well, um, such as dogs should be on leans in certain areas and you're not allowed to walk them with the no rays. Like, okay, we're going to do another video on how to walk your dog correctly and what equipment you should be using because I'm fed up of seeing people um, using the wrong types of leans on their dogs um, and why you shouldn't really be letting your dog off a lead. But we'll get into that in, in another video. So many of these laws are controlled by local authorities through recording or issuing licenses, which we're going to talk about licenses in the reading law. Okay, and you can get fined some of the times depending on the law. If you, if you break it, it's not always um, it's not always uh, the fact that you're gonna go to jail, stay there. Okay, so we do have um, 
people that enforce these laws, such as the police or the RSPCA, and the RSPCA work on operate on this animal welfare. Act of 2006 and this is where the late pros do come in because even the RSPCA won't come out to say animals being mistreated as in you've got a tiny little shih tzu type dog that you use horse clippers on and to clip the ho- the dog out and it's completely scarred and is stressed or like a horse is going to crack on its hoof and it's still being ridden even though the vet told you not to ride it the RSPCA unfortunately won't do anything about that because you're protected by the Animal Welfare Act. Because you're not doing anything wrong according to that law. So uh, there is uh, the SPC in Scotland, so the Scottish Society of, for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. It's, that's similar. Um, and then of uh, to the RSPCA, and then there's another one that is the USPCA, which is the Ulster Society in Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. So it's the same thing, basically, uh, but different variations. So the methods in which are used in the events of breaking these laws, uh, they include, like, sometimes you get a warning, you don't get fined or go to court straight away. Um, there is education, which, guess what? When you watch these videos, this is classed as education, because that is what I'm trying to do, is educate you on the rules of um, animals and what you should and should not be doing with your pets to try and make the world a little bit of a better place. Um, sometimes you'll get prosecuted and you'll get fines. Depends on as long as you've got jail. And ignorance is no defence. It, it all just depends on how bad um, the case is. So the Animal Welfare Act 2006 is a piece of legislation which suspends the protection of animals, uh, Animal Act 1911. So it's grown from that. And it also consigns numbers of other pieces of legislation in that one act. So this act, as in all the laws, states the offences against animals and also legal defences for such offences. Is all It also causes the prevention of harm, promotion of welfare, licensing and registration, courts of practice, animals in distress and enforcement powers, prosecutions, so it's like um, post-convict powers. So this act applies to breeders, Owners of pets and people who have working dogs and farmers, okay? Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Anybody who owns an animal, this law applies to them. Animals have a backbone and they can feel pain uh, and they are protected in this act. Insects um, are not because they're not believed to feel pain. What do we look at? Maybe go over that in another video because it's a bit complicated. Um, this act applies to anybody who is responsible for an animal with a on a permanent or temporary basis, including uh, the persons who are in charge of that animal. So even if you're just looking after um, someone's animal while you're over on holiday and you don't have pets yourself, usually if something goes wrong, you are held responsible and accountable for that animal. So this act states that if you own an animal or you were looking after an animal and you are older than 16, so remember this is just in the UK, then it is your, your responsibility to look after that animal nobody else's but yours same if you, if you bring a child into this world you have the responsibility nobody else to make sure that that child is growing up and is functioning and developing and are not more right it, it's no different if something horrible happens to the animal and you do nothing to stop it then you are responsible for the cruelty that has forsaken the animal in your care regardless if you weren't the one actually causing the pain sometimes uh, yeah it is it does say sometimes it's okay for animals to suffer but I, I don't believe that that is true um i mean okay that the, there's going to be pain if they give birth but you know you, you still have to help uh, out now and again it's because some animals do have difficulty giving birth so you are not allowed to take part in any more animal fight that should be common sense you cannot duck an animal's tail unless it's for a medical reason or for it is for work this should be done by a vet not by you the act enables animals to have a good quality of life being on the correct diet and we're gonna do a video on diets um 
for dogs and the benefits of each diet. Good housing and to be able to interact with any friends they may have, e.g. other animals, same or of a different species, it doesn't matter. You should let them behave in a manner that is natural to them and it takes them to the vet when it's necessary. If your cat has cancer and you can't afford f- to discover how bad that cancer is or whatever, you'll probably be rough surrendering that animal, especially if it needs treatment. But if it's suffering and it's really in pain, you do not let it keep suffering for weeks on end before you can afford to pay the vet to put that poor animal out of its misery. You do not do that, okay? I do know somebody has done that and it it frustrated the crap out of me. It was horrendous to watch, but will they listen? Will they know? It's like I may as well be talking to a brick wall when it comes to these people and they know who they are because I have talked about them about a horse as well. Anyways, back to the law. You're breaking the law by putting ownership on an animal on somebody who's younger than 16. Okay, so you can't you can't do that, right? You've got to be sixteen, or over to buy an animal, or to look after an animal. If you're younger than sixteen, then you cannot own an animal. So the RSPCA can help to educate owners who may not realise that that actually causes animals pain and suffering, e.g., um, animal hoarders because people have too many animals uh, that they just can't cope, or people who overfeed their animals um, because we see a lot now animal obesity is on the rise, and that's looking your animal a bit too much and <laughs> giving them too much food. Okay, it's like you, you have a controlled diet, you're gonna have a happy life, and it's the same for an animal. They also take action if their advice is not followed by taking the owner to call. They, they, they can do this. The court may impose a fine or disqualification uh, the convict from owning animals, keeping any animals, working with animals, transporting or arranging on the transportation of animals. They just can't do it. If you've been to court for it, you just will not be allowed to do any of those things. And if you are then you will go to jail. In extreme cases, if it has maybe been prisons, the five needs of the animals are all covered by the Animal Welfare Act of 2006 in detail. However, there are still loopholes. Um, and I can't stress that enough. Okay, like overfeeding your dog. That's cruelty, but it's okay if... Because you don't know that you're overfeeding it, apparently. So that's okay, because it's not technically covered in the law, which is ridiculous. Anyway... Um, Animal Welfare Act Husbandry of Dogs So the Animal Welfare Act states that what you should do to look after your dog It is really common sense when it comes to looking after dogs It's like looking after your child It is quite similar to, yeah, it's just like after your child um, And some people do take this too far For example, people treat their dogs like human babies Like, I mean, they dress them up And they feed them off with spoons And it's ridiculous, okay? It, or they carry them around in their handbags that's also quite cruel. Pushing them around in prams, yeah, that's another one. Unless the dog is a good medical reason that it cannot walk or it has to have a wheelchair or it has a pram, there's only a reason it should be in a pram for a medical reason, not because you think, oh, it's so cute. Okay, it's got legs. Let it, let it use them. You use yours, so let the dog use theirs. Um, some parts of the world, like Japan, there are cafes that serve their humans and the dogs. And I mean, the dogs do sit at the table with their humans, and they get spoon fed. It's uh, it's, it's ridiculous. It's not it's not a nice sight. Okay, um, but there's nothing in the law to say that this is cruelty. Even dressing your dog up like a doll, um, because the dog, in hindsight, is well looked after, and all that. That's why I'm saying with the loopholes. But what about their actual instincts? It's not the natural instinct to be pushed around in a problem dressed up like a Barbie doll. If you push your dog around in a pram, uh, you know, how would you, you, the dog get the exercise that it needs? We say animals have feelings, which they do, elephants have not grieve, um, they're dead. Uh, do we ever think how insulted the dog may feel if it, if it looks like a Barbie doll? Uh, you know, you, you're taking away the dog's rights in, in a way, or you give it a dodgy haircut. How's the dog going to feel? I mean, okay, the dog can't say, hey, I don't like this haircut, hey, I don't like you dressing me up, but just think about it. 
Uh, and why is this clearly not against the law? There is such a thing as too much love. Please keep that in mind. Yet the law only covers the be- the beating and the hardening of dogs as cruelty. But there's also all the loving as well. It should also be covered in, in the law. Even if it's just a fine. Warrants are used to enable access to suspect um, to s- suspect locations, which you all know if you watch uh, any police detective things or you are the police or someone's had to use a warrant against you. A warrant can be issued if there are grounds to suspect that animals have been poorly treated, uh, e.g. overbreeding or unsuitable environments. We're going to try and stop puppy farms. Um, with these videos so if you watch the videos then you'll be helping to support the fight against puppy farms in but i'm going to cover all that in a later video so a warrant will allow access to the property of somebody by somebody by the authority e.g the police or even the rspca yeah? this allows them to investigate the premises and take any dogs that may be suffering one or more people can accompany the person who holds the warrant the person holding the warrant can then investigate the property any time during the month the warrant was issued. The person who has the warrant must show the warrant if requested to by the house owner or the property owner. But other than that, there's nothing really you can do to stop them. So the day-to-day care of a dog is essential. And it aids this to help to the health and feeding plants. Which we're going to go through feeding plants later on. Some knowledge of your dog's by breed is also essential. That pees me off because a lot of people buy a dog because he looks pretty and don't take into consideration that this breed, like for example a husky, they take a lot of exercise and a lot of grooming. Don't just buy a husky because he's pretty, they're very intelligent, they're very stubborn and it's a very challenging breed of dog to actually own. Um, but it can also be a warning not to put anybody off of uh, huskies, but just knowing about the breed of the dog that you are wanting to own is essential and helps go a long way, um, which is what I'm going to try and help you do in later videos as well. And this is what the whole unity of life is all about. Oh, right, okay. So handling techniques may be different depending on the breed. Keep that in mind, so cleaning, cleaning the accommodation is also required where animals are quartered. In the case of the animals which have toys, check that they are safe to use. There's nothing for that. They're going to cut themselves, hurt themselves, choke them. Uh, and damage, control message for an animal in public such as dogs on leads. Um, registering your dog with a vet is also really wise, just like you being registered with a doctor. Like I've mentioned before, microchipping for dogs is now required by the law and the dog trust. They're doing this for free. Or well, at least they were. So the microchipping of dogs, which changed in 2015, is under the Welfare Act. And it is, the, the one that I'm talking about is purely just England. So this has got nothing to do with Scotland, Wales or Northern Ireland. So Dog Licensing Act of 1867 was simply required an annual license for every dog unless it was a working sheep dog or a blind person's dog or a dog that was younger than six months old so about 50 percent of dog owners had one generally this law was just ignored just didn't exist people just pretended no not there didn't exist even by the authorities which is uh, quite scary when the police are ignoring the laws so the monies have received didn't come the, cover the animation costs of the license. However, an advancement in technology has enabled a more efficient system than a piece of paper. Because if you're anything like me, you're going to lose pieces of paper. You put it down and it goes poof, never to be seen again. Which did nothing to prove the keeper of the dog, um, to prove who actually owned the dog uh, and allowed to recover the straw by the keeper. Because you, you couldn't say this this stray dog's my uh, dog with that piece of paper because it just didn't prove anything. So the microchip will include details of the dog, usually its name, and the contact details of the owner. Uh, and all this is recorded and approved by a microchipping company. I'm just pointing it out there now. The ability to of authorization people to simply can scan a dog, 
or a wand. You've probably seen it if you've um, been to a vet or you've worked in a kennel or you've watched anything to do with the RSPCA or rescue sentence. You see them going over the dog with a wand looking for a microchip. And it really is what we just got the above the dog's name and the contact deals for the owner. So if you move house, it's your responsibility to get that chip up to date with your new address and any new phone numbers in case any phone numbers change. Okay, and it also shows the dog's not being chipped and if the dog hasn't been chipped, then people will automatically assume that it is stray because if it was owned by somebody, it will be chipped because it must by law. So the microchip on a dog's appears to be a reasonable solution to a problem which has plagued this country for many years um, and brought to head more so since dangerous designer dogs have been prevalent. I do not like that term, designer dogs. Okay, we shouldn't have designer dogs. We shouldn't be picking for traits because it's fashionable. We shouldn't be buying a dog because it's fashionable. It's ridiculous and it's damn right disgusting because you wouldn't pick the genetic traits of your child because it's the fashion so don't do it with your dog you know just think if you wouldn't do it to your child you're not gonna do it to your dog or your cat or whatever animal or pet that you may own even if that pet's a beaded lizard if you don't do it to your child don't do it to your pet simple from the 6th of april 2016 so, five years ago now, every keeper of a dog which has not been implanted with a microchip by that date, which is older than eight weeks, and which is not a certificate working dog for the purposes of selection of the Animal Welfare Act 2006, must ensure that it is microchip. A veterinary surgeon can certificate on a form to prove by the secondary state that a dog should not be microchipped for reasons for the animal's help. The, there are other safeguards for the dog's importance. Uh, there are a number of other pieces of information, such as the one um, and the chip frequencies. Okay. <laughs> so the reason I'm, I'm, I'm stating that that dog must be microchip is because I damn well know there are people out there that don't even know that that law exists. Okay, your dog has got to be microchipped. You should really, be, I think cats should have microchips as well, um, especially because a lot of people let their cats just wander around and they get lost all the time. Um, that would make life a little bit easier. Okay, so we have got six laws in total, and we're going to go through six laws in this mini series. However, that is it for this video on the Animal Welfare Law. I'm oh, sorry, Act of 2006. I hope you have enjoyed your time, you've learnt something new, and you're going to change your ways um, and get that dog microchipped if your dog isn't microchipped, and you're going to think long and hard about the next time you feed your dog and you're going not to not overfeed your dog and you're going to make sure it is on the proper diet and that you know like i said very very simple if you want to do it to your child you're not going to do it to your pet okay please click on my face down here to subscribe you know you want to it's a very pretty face as i say so myself <laughs> up here will be the link to the next video why don't you check that out i know you want to and down here will automatically be the playlist for this mini series for all the videos that are going to come after this one so you know you want to keep an eye on that and you know what the best way is to find out when i have uploaded a video it's to subscribe and to press that notification bell because then you will get notified every time i have a video uploaded to this channel okay i will see you next time bye